Welcome to this episode number 36 of your next trade call today, earnings game on. So last week we looked at the uh, seven magnificent, uh, how this uh, FANG have been outperforming the market and are mostly explaining the outperformance or the strong performance of the Nasdaq and the S&P, where for both um, those names are making roughly 70 to 80 percent of the overall performance. What is pretty clear is now we are waiting for the earnings season, which will be starting on Thursday and Friday. Uh, and the expectations are not that high, but um, we need now to have confirmation that the earnings are going to be OK for the market uh, to move higher. Uh, just quickly looking at the at the first chart of the day, uh, which is looking at the US 10 years. So the US 10 years was hovering between 370% and 380%, as you can see here. Um, was and uh, we had this week a big move uh, in terms of, of yield. So the yields went up, bonds were sold sold off over the week, uh, not only in the US, but that was true as well in Europe. Uh, on the reality that inflation is still pretty much here, but as well, uh, that tells us that uh, pretty much that at least for the US, that the economy is doing better than uh, what we were expecting not so long ago. My expectations are still the same, which is you. Uh, Europe uh, will be struggling, and I think US going into H2 will be struggling. Why? Because the US consumer, which is making 70% of the US GDP, uh, are going to be running out of money. So what about the year-to-date asset performances? Uh, as always, looking at the S&P, 15%, 30% for the NASDAQ, so twice the performance of the S&P. We are still into the double digit for the euro stocks Nikkei up at roughly 24 percent um, looking at now uh, here looking at the dollar uh, dollar versus most currencies has been uh, weakening um, what is what is interesting as well is Bitcoin as we know have been very very strong so on the back recently of expectations that um, uh, many ETFs will be launched and that that will give more access to people to the cryptocurrency. WTI down 8%, trading around the, the low 70s, uh, copper uh, down 1% on the year. Uh, what I think is interesting is moving uh, into the year to, the week to date asset performance, where we see some risk off uh, in the light blue for, for stocks. Uh, so S&P, NASDAQ down 1%, but more interestingly, uh, anything that is Europe uh, has been down more than 3%. Um, now I think the market is, is waking up on the idea that uh, H2 in Europe uh, is, is going to be a problem. Uh, but, you know, if you look even at H1, uh, both in, in continental Europe and in UK, uh, the economies have been struggling, uh, flattish in, to best in, in, um, in Germany. Uh, same in France. If you look at Sweden, that is in recession. And if you look at actually the, the PMIs, manufacturing and services that we had, uh, that was on Monday and on Wednesday, the numbers are telling you that recessions uh, are coming. Um, so that's the overall picture. But on the other end of the spectrum, as we can see, despite this uh, risk off uh, for stocks, uh, dollar weakened. Uh, and that's an interesting fact because most of the time, you know, when the market is in a risk off mode, uh, what you will see is, is the dollar uh, strengthening. Uh, that has not been the case for this week. That has been explained as well uh, by the differential in terms of yield. So what has been true for the U.S. 10 years has been true as well for the Bund, has been true for the O18 in France or the BTP. So yields have been on the way up, a lot of, of sell-off uh, for the bonds. Um, crypto not moving that much, WTI 4%, and that explains as well uh, for the WTI why some of the sectors and industry perform well on the week. Year to date industry performance, same as usual. On the left hand side, regional bank, on the other end of the spectrum, technology, semiconductors, and it's still the same. So you get the SP, which is here. So that is the outperformers, and those are the underperformers. So as you can see, the market breath is confirmed by this year to date industry performance. What about the week to date industry performance? You only get mostly one big winner, which was the old services, um, roughly uh, up 7% on the week. Mostly that was as of yesterday. Why? Because in the afternoon, we had a bounce. Uh, in WTI, which helped the whole sector. On the other end of the spectrum, obviously, as we mentioned before, as yields are going up, that means bonds are selling off, and the TLTs of this world went down 3% plus 
for for the week so really the big move for this week um, has been in the in the bond market uh, where bonds have been sold off yields going up um, and if we look at the sector performance, I think, you know, the year to date, we know the story, uh, but I'm more looking in the week to date sector performance. The healthcare down 3%, some, some names um, struggle. Interestingly, real estate did pretty well despite the yields uh, going up. So kind of a tricky market in terms of uh, uh, across asset classes if, if you are playing uh, different assets because the the moves have been quite of unusual uh, versus what you will normally see if you look at the rates now as i've been mentioning so looking at the us 10 years first so the last which is now at 40.7 percent so we are now above the four percent here we had a massive moves uh, for the developed market us uk germany and italy we are talking 20 bips to 30 bips, so 0.2% to 0.3%. So the long end of the curve uh, has been moving quite a lot uh, versus the, the, the two, the short term that is not moving that much. So if you look at the uh, yield curve, the 10 versus the two, we went from minus 1.06% as of last week as at minus 0.88 uh, as of Friday, mostly, as I said, because the 10 years, the long end of the curve has been moving. Um, and that means that's going to have that might have implication as well in terms of uh, risk on risk off. If you think about when yields are going up, uh, very often uh, anything that is gross has been struggling recently. So uh, we should be looking at all those names that have been performing very well and not performing the market going into earnings, uh, because if earnings are not going to be good, then uh, the market might be struggling. Uh, and if you look at the Fed fund rates, so that's another way to be uh, kind of uh, uh, looking at what the market is, is, is forecasting for the, uh, for the Fed going forward. So we are at 5 or 8%. Um, and, and if you compare that with um, what the market is expecting, uh, which is here for, for, the, for, the, for the, to the end of July, um, so we get a differential of 22 bips. So roughly the market is pricing a 90% chance that the Fed will be uh, hiking rates by 25 bips at the end of, of, of July uh, into the next FOMC meeting. But as you can see, if you compare the last versus the, the end of June, there is not much of a move. So the short part, a short part of the curve really has not been moving much. It's really the long end of the curve. And um, one of the... the uh, the uh, consequences of, of all of this is, is the, yes, the, the volatility has been a bit up uh, for the week. So uh, VIX is now around 15% uh, versus the 13.5% that we had as of last week. The, the VIX term structure is, is, is pretty much uh, as expected, but, you know, um, um, as volatility in the bond market, in the rates is going higher, uh, is it going to be uh, going more into the equity and into the, the, the volatility uh, through the VIX and, and, and some other uh, products? So I'm interested now in, in looking at the S&P, as always, looking at technical analysis. So what is interesting is we kind of struggle into the 40, 4500 level. Um, if you're looking at, uh, uh, there has not been new highs. Okay, so uh, we have been, at least for the week, no new highs. Uh, for the NASDAQ, uh, that's the same. So no new highs. We have been consolidating after a very strong move, 10% uh, for, uh, for the NASDAQ. Uh, so again, market now is expecting, is waiting for the next catalyst, which is the earnings. Russell is the same. Uh, so we, we have been consolidating for a month or, or plus. Russell versus the Nasdaq, that's the same. If you look at uh, the FANG, which have been the outperformers, again, we are waiting for the next catalyst. So that kind of wait and see position. Uh, the Apple of this world, most of those named the Microsoft, you see the, the strong move that started in January and that was amplified from the March, the, the lows uh, of the overall market in March, uh, where those names have been outperforming the market is, 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 is very, very true. So the, the picture is still the same. 
Still the same for the regional banking. I think if you look about you, um, if you're looking for the next uh, next drivers, we know that since March, everyone is kind of 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 hoping that nothing bad is going to be happening for those for to more regional banking. But the reality, as the yields, especially the ten years, are even higher than they were three months ago, and and the picture is telling you that we're going to be at four percent plus for quite some time, uh, that's going to be detrimental for many regional banks. Uh, and that means the losses uh, that were supposed to be, you know, um, uh, not showing up, they, uh, some banks are, are, will be running uh, in trouble. So uh, we're going to have the earnings season that is starting on Friday, on Thursday, then on Friday with JP Morgan. Uh, so JP Morgan, that's obviously one of the big drivers, one of the this is the biggest bank on earth, okay? So this is really about the, the US GDP, the US economy, um, and we should be looking at what uh, uh, Jamie Dimon and the uh, the company will be telling us. Looking at the at the euro, um, at the euro stock 600, uh, so if you've been following me for more than two weeks, you know that I've been short Europe. I've been warning people that Europe is struggling. Uh, the economies are not doing well. I mean, we are talking zero to zero point five percent at best. The most leading indicators are not trending that well. Uh, and uh, this week we had a confirmation. So that's the stock six hundred, the DAX. Most of those indexes have been down three to four percent. What is interesting is many of those uh, of the. Um, Sorry, the chemicals, the industrials in Europe. So we are talking chemicals. We are talking names like Siemens in Europe. So if you look at the chart of Siemens, maybe I should put it uh, very quickly. Okay, so that will be Siemens. Uh, so that's the chart of Siemens since the highs of the of the expiry in June. The stock is down, you know, 20, uh, 20 euros roughly. So more than 10 percent. So you have many stocks that outperform and on the expectations that Europe will be doing well with China reopening with industrials, it's just not happening. Uh, and a kind of a waking up call. Uh, so I'm still keeping my short Europe. Uh, it's, it's working well now. Um, looking at oil, CL1, uh, picture is the same. We are trading sideways between 70 and 75. No real catalyst. Copper is, is waiting for a catalyst. I just wanted to give you again the picture of the US 10 years to the yields. As you can see for the week, this is a big move. So we have been consolidating. The move has been uh, bond selling off, yields going up. Uh, Euro dollar, as I've been saying, uh, consolidating for four weeks, but actually uh, Euro was pretty strong for the week despite you know many headlines. But if you think about it, um, uh, if you think in terms of, of differential of, of, of yields, um, it's not only the 10 years in the US that went up by 20 bips, but that was true as well in Europe, 20 to 30 bips. So in terms of carry trade of the differential of rates, uh, that has been helping the currency. A bit of strength for the for the Japanese yen. Uh, there has been a lot of talks of you know something that we mentioned uh, uh, last week about the 145 level, which was the first level of intervention uh, for for the Bank of Japan that was at the end of uh, 2022. Um, so there have been some talks that the Bank of Japan may, might intervene. Um, I've read some good articles that uh, Mr. Yen is calling for uh, 160 as a level, and as long as you're going to have such a big uh, differential in terms of the U.S. 10 years and the Japanese 10 years, which are now yielding around 3.6 to 3.7 percent. Uh, that is obviously not helping uh, the um, Japanese yen. Uh, what about what happened this week and what's going to happen uh, in in the in the next 10 days? So for the week, as always, I like to be looking at the S&P futures over the last five sessions. So. Monday, pretty quiet because we had the 4th of July, so uh, it's only the S&P futures trading here, but uh, the, the session was was pretty short and, and Monday, not very much of, of volume. Um, but, you know, interestingly, we had on Thursday a start of a sell-off, and I think it was um, mostly driven for, first by, by Europe, which started to, uh, to, to, to sell off uh, yields uh, as well were, were moving. We had the NFP numbers. Uh, first reaction was um, NFP is around the, the, the low 200s, which are telling you uh, that actually, oh sorry, that was for the ADP here. That was the ADP, which was uh, much stronger than expected at 500. But the ADP is a bit of a... 
a lot of shit number, but it's it's there is a bit of, of hiccup and 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 um, and error, uh, should I say, for the ADP. Uh, the trend is telling you that NFPs um, uh, we went we were around the 250, 300 monthly, and now we are trading around the 200. So. Uh, U.S. economy is still hiring uh, 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 new people, but not as much as before, uh, and that means the the economy overall is is slowing. So, uh, slowing from a one to two percent level that tells you that you don't have a, a huge error of margin to go into the zero percent to recession. Uh, and I'm interested into the PMI manufacturing that we had. Uh, worldwide, so um, in, in in blue here you get the here this is the one you get the, the eurozone. So eurozone that really outperformed at one stage um, the overall uh, economy. So uh, they, we see a lot of inflows in Europe, and that's always uh, funny as a European investor when you see uh, many uh, U.S. people tweeting about you know how LVMH, how the luxury, how the uh, Italian banks are doing well, you know it's going to last for three to six months, then you know they're going to be selling the market again. Uh, so Europe, uh, the picture is not looking great, but overall if you think that this is the 50 level, um, that tells you that the world is growing, is barely growing. Okay, uh, and finally, looking at the T note, uh, meaning the, the US 10 years versus the, the DXY here. So DXY, uh, so you see the divergence in, in white for the DXY, which is the mostly the euro dollar at 60%. So recently there has been a divergence, um, which has been a bit um, um, been scratching uh, for many investors, at least from Thursday and Friday, where we see the yields going up um, and kind of a risk off for the market and, uh, no, sorry, not a risk of, uh, sorry, uh, yields going up, but in the meantime, really uh, the US dollar uh, uh, weakening. So in terms of catalyst going forward, um, so for on Wednesday, we get the CPI, we get the PPI. Recently looking at how the market has been behaving is uh, on for the S&P on CPI day, most of the time recently market has been flattish to up, so reacting pretty well, why? because the CPI has been uh, ticking um, lower and below the expectations. So what is your risk? What is the pain trade here is probably CPI actually being higher than the expectations. Um, that is for your pain trade. Uh, but CPI, PPI, you know, again, expectations for many people is, you know, inflation is coming down as the economies have been slowing both in services and manufacturing. So if you look at the ISM services and uh, pay uh, price and the ISM manufacturing uh, pr prices as well, it came down. What was interesting I didn't mention is you still have a divergence, at least in the US, between services and manufacturing where the ISM services printed 53%, whereas the ISM manufacturing for the 46%. So services are still holding. Um, my view is still the same. H2 is going to be is going to be a problem. So CPI, PPI on Thursday, we get some Fed speakers. Okay, so on Monday, uh, Wednesday. Uh, and we get the earnings season that is starting here. So that is only the start uh, for me, the, the, the most, uh, really the one that is starting and kicking uh, the earnings season is with JP Morgan. So that will be on Friday. Um, we look at the chart. Um, if you look at JP Morgan, I think the last earnings, the, the stock reacted pretty well. Uh, but if you look at the last eight before, uh, the, the, the stock was pretty weak on the day. So um, we're going to see what Jimmy Diamond and his team is going to say about the U.S. economy. Uh, they're going to be uh, launching probably a share buyback program um, because you know they, they the, the the banks uh, passed the stress test at the end and the end of June. What about the volatility going forward? What is the market uh, pricing? So we got the S&P weekly straddle pricing a 1.3% move. So both the implied volatility and the realized volatility is going higher. Not that complicated after a very low level. So we do know, uh, I've been uh, underlining this over and over, that uh, you had many products and, and people selling the volatility. So the trade has been, you know, selling volatility over and over, has been pre working pretty well uh, until it doesn't. Um, finally, looking at, at the earnings season. So here it's coming from FactSet. If you're not on FactSet, uh, 
uh, mailing uh, you should do it's it's for free so what is the market expecting year on year earnings are expected to be done by 6.4 percent x energy so that's here that's roughly flat minus 0.7 uh, percent and revenues you know we are talking you know minus 0.8 percent here you get the different sectors I strongly advise you to have a look at it uh, before the earnings and during the earnings, how the companies have been doing, how is the price reaction from companies that are beating the expectation, missing the expectations, listening to some earnings calls. And finally, because I get the dual citizenship on Friday, there is Basti Day, uh, uh, 14th of July. So um, that would be for the French um, that would be uh, the 14 juillet. Um, so you should expect on the 13th and the 14th a lot of uh, new cars burning in, in, <laughs> in France, unfortunately, because this is what happened most of the time in France around the 13th of July on, 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 on the Basti day where you're going to see uh, cars burning. So you're going to see the, some headlines. Um, unfortunately, you don't have to trust, you know, all those idiots that will be on Twitter, you know, telling you uh, there's going to be a French coup. Um, don't trust those people. If you trust people that are saying that, that tells you a lot about how deeply they are doing their analysis. But that's quite funny because, you know, this is the weekend trading and I always look to be looking at all those idiots. So this is uh, it for me today. Um, so if you are looking for more information, uh, either for the 4x4 video series, which is, you know, a video series giving you an investment process uh, or the mentoring, which is one-on-one -on -one sessions on um, on Zoom. Uh, this is 12 sessions over three to five months. You can join us on the trading community, which is on Discord. This is for free. So there are three channels for free and some other channels which are uh, made for more advanced traders. We are talking people that have done the 4x4 or have done the, uh, uh, the, the mentoring. So this is it for me today. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to see you next week because this is the 14th of, of July, uh, so 14 juillet. But um, I hope to see you over the summer. Let's see how, the summer, how busy the summer will be. Uh, but um, see you soon. All the best. Bye-bye.